biography of J.H. Mensah. Joseph Henry Kweku Abu Mensah was born on 31st October 1928 in 2nd E. His father, also Joseph Henry, was a colonial civil servant originally from Elmina. His mother, known as Abna Ahimfie, was a trader in textiles who came from one of the royal households in Ewa Domasi, Brongahafo. Abna Ahimfie gave birth to 14 children, of whom 10 survived to adulthood. J.H. was the third of those 10 and the eldest son. He began nursery school in second D, and his father traveled to take up various postings as a colonial administrator in the Gold Coast before settling in Edum, Kumasi. It was here that the young J.H. was raised. After his primary education at St. Peter's Cathedral School in Kumasi, J.H. won an Ashanti Confederacy scholarship to study at Achimota College and entered Cadbury House in 1942. He was in the first cohort of students to enter the University College of the Gold Coast at Legon in 1948 and the first president of the Junior Common Room at Legon Hall. On graduating from the university, in 1953, he joined the colonial era civil service and spent a year working as an insistent inspector of taxes. However, he won another scholarship to pursue postgraduate studies abroad and proceeded to the London School of Economics in 1954. At the LSE, he earned first a bachelor's and then a master's degree in economics. He was concurrently a research fellow of the University of the Gold Coast, a position he maintained until 1958. He continued his postgraduate studies at Stanford University in California between 1956 and 1957. He joined the Development Planning Division of the UN in New York in 1958 but in 1961 was recruited by the Ghanaian government to lead the National Planning Commission in Accra. Another LSE alumnus, Arthur Lewis, economic advisor to the president of the New Republic of Ghana, and others worked with him to write the pioneering seven-year development plan. In 1965, as political pressure on him from the government-owned media began to build. J.H. left Ghana for the UN Economic Commission for Africa in Addis Ababa. After the National Liberation Council coup d'etat of February 1966, he became first an economic advisor to one of the three NLC leaders and then was called back to Ghana to become Commissioner for Finance in 1969. With the restoration of democracy in August that year, Dr. Kofi Abrefa Buzia, leader of the new Progress Party, asked J.H. to stand for election. He ran for the seat in Sunyani and won handsomely in the PP landslide that year. From that point onwards, his life was bound up with politics. He was appointed Minister of Finance and Economic Planning in 1969, and from 1971 to 72, solely as Minister of Finance. In January 1972, following the PP government's devaluation of the city, Ignatius Kutu Achampong staged a coup d'etat and installed the National Redemption Council. This marked the beginning of J.H.'s first period of imprisonment. 
He spent three periods in detention. On the third occasion, after publishing an allegedly anti-NRC pamphlet, he was charged with sedition, which carried the death penalty. He was found guilty in 1975, but the appeal court, presided over by the late Justice Cecilia Coranteng Addo, freed him in 1978. Following Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings' 4th June 1979 coup, J.H. joined others working to revive civilian political life. A vocal founder member of the PP Revivalist Popular Front Party under the leadership of Victor Owusu. He lobbied for the return of democracy. In the 1979 elections that the PFP lost to Hilal Iman's Nkrumahist People's National Party, JH was elected chairman of Sunyani District Council. He used it to build support for the Dankwa Dombo Buzia tradition in Brongahafa. He simultaneously partnered with Kwame Pianim, whom he previously recruited from the United States to join the Ministry of Finance to run development and management consultants, an independent consultancy in Accra. After Rawlings' second coming on 31st December 1981, J.H. left Ghana again, moving to the UK in the expectation that he would return home as soon as the revolutionary flurry was over. He was to spend the next 13 years in exile. During these years, he worked tirelessly to promote the restoration of democracy in Ghana, coordinating demonstrations, lobbying foreign governments and MPs, publishing, fundraising, organizing and keenly following debates and procedure at the Mother of Parliaments in Westminster. He helped form the London-based Ghana Democratic Movement and beginning in 1991, became a founder member of the Dankwa Buzia Club in London, the ginger group that preceded the new Patriotic Party. After the New Patriotic Party was founded in 1992, he became the first chairman of the MPP UK. The death in December 1994 of his much-loved mother gave him the opportunity to return to Ghana. After her burial in January 1995, he launched into political life in Ghana again with gusto. In December 1996, he stood in Sunyani East and won by nearly 6,700 votes. He would retain the seat in the next two elections, securing 65% of the vote in his last race in 2004. Back in Parliament after 25 years, he took to the business. With the victory of the MPP and John Ajikum Kufo's election as president in December 2000, J.H. began his second ministerial career. First as majority leader from January 2001 and as leader of the government's economic management team while Ghana tackled a major liquidity crisis. In this, he had the help of fine younger technocrats, such as Yao Osafo and Paul Aqua. He was also Minister for Public Sector Reform, taking on the challenges of how to recruit, train, motivate, and retain the caliber of public servant required to transform Ghana. He became senior minister in October 2001. The opposition declared the role alien to Ghanaian political culture. The only known precedent was in Singapore, where Lee Kuan Yew 
had been the power behind the throne for over a decade. Yet J.H. succeeded in the face of some antagonism in molding the role for future senior ministers. His last official government role was as chairman of the National Development Planning Commission from 2002 to 2009. He decided to retire from active politics and try the quiet life. He looked forward to a little travel, work on the boards of mining companies where he was executive, non-executive director, Adansi Gold, Anglo Gold Ashanti, quality time with family, and more time with his books. Unfortunately, failing eyesight left him struggling to read. His final public appearance at a state occasion was at the swearing-in of President Nanado Dankwa Akufuado and Vice President Mahamudu Bawumia on 7th January 2017 at Black Star Square. Having abandoned his faith as a young man, he returned to the Catholic Church in his 40s. He had a deep belief in the notion that the message of Christ's mission on earth was that one must be willing to suffer for one's fellow man. It was at Christ the King Cathedral in Sunyani that he was installed as a Knight Commander of St. Gregory the Great in July 2007. A succession of strokes from 2006 onwards weakened J.H although initially he bounced back. Even his last illness, which began in June 2017, did not quell his spirit. With admirable care from nurses and doctors at the 37 military hospital in Accra, he lived on another 13 months. God called him on the morning of 12th July, 2018. He is survived by one brother, four sisters, many cousins, six children, ten grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. May his soul rest in perfect peace.